everybody, welcome back to James Redman TV and welcome to another Redman Rounds. Up today we're going to be talking about, well actually you can see a little bit of a new set and it's just, I'm in my flat, I've just changed the angle. And um, if you heard any noise, that's going to be the washing machine because that's just doing its thing in the background. So thank you for tuning in again. Uh, we've got a midfield uh, cluster mess again uh, because we've got a few updates I suppose. Uh, so the two updates that I'm here to give you is that we're linked with Jewsby Hall from Leicester City. Apparently he's supposed to be the Jordan Henderson replacement. And then we're still looking into Andre. But before we buy Andre, we're analysing Thiago's situation. So they're the two updates that I've got for you. Uh, bah, 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 bah. We'll talk. We'll talk about Andre first. We'll talk about because I think it's interesting if it's true that Andre and Thiago relate. Now, not that they're related. I just mean if them, if Thiago going out relates to Andre coming in, that's wild to me. Because I, listen, I understand Thiago's got twelve months left. I'm surprised if there is negotiations about expect, uh, extending his contract because as much as I am somebody who is on the belief that it's beneficial to keep Thiago for the next 12 months, I don't know if it's the smartest to keep him for beyond that just because of the high wages and the fact he's not going to be a first team player. And, you know, at the same time, as, as much as I would love to be in a world where we spend more money, I understand that's not how our clubs run. So to be a bit more realistic, um, Thiago, it would probably be best to free up those wages. Or if he would be happy to take a huge wage cut, then fair enough, you know, I think he's on 200k a week at the moment. I'd ideally want to be paying a player like that no more than 120k a week if they're not going to play as often as Thiago plays. So, first and foremost, it'd be fantastic. Fendi with you if Thiago could um, just, just play the next 12 months, then go and you get Andre for a year to bed in anyway. Because let's be honest, Thiago, not getting any younger. And then everyone else in our midfield, you'd consider a young player. But still, Thiago is somebody who will be gone in 12 months' time, more likely than not. So I don't think them two relate, and I think we should still go and get Andre regardless, whether it be now or in January, as we need options. Uh, but Jusby Hall seems to be someone who's been mentioned a little bit more. I think the, the guy's name or the journalist's name was uh, Jacob Tabalt or something like that. Uh, I don't want to misrepresent the guy's name or nothing. I don't know if he's reliable or not. Uh, but it's just the name that I've been seeing more often than others. It seems like the type of guy will sign. Just someone completely out of nowhere, someone we wouldn't have expected. He's at Leicester, he's homegrown. It makes a lot of sense. And I suppose if Jürgen Klopp... I'm going to say it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense with what we do. It's not necessarily what I'd want. I think there's many better options out there than him. You know, I've been seeing Kessie linked with 15 million to Saudi. I've saw Lorente being linked with 20 million move to Saudi. I've saw, um, that what's his name, Kameda. Someone reminded me of his name yesterday. He was a free agent up until his move to Lazio. All I'm saying is there's been great options out there for midfielders. Manchester United are about to sign Amrabat for £25 million, more likely than not. That's the guy that I'd take out of everyone who is... Because I'm analysing who is most likely financially viable, who's not going to just want 200k a week wages from get-go, and who's going to come into the team and add much needed quality right here, right now? Amrabat. So if you go and get Amrabat and Lavia, that'd be great. A recommendation I came up with yesterday on stream on who I'd like to sign. And let me know in the comments down below if this is a W or an L. But I think it'd be good to go out and get Pavard, who is a right-back and a centre-back World Cup winner. Won multiple Bundesligas with Bayern Munich. That's a player that I'd take more defensive as a right-back. So now, if we want to be more in possession, Trent can now... But switch between that role, but Pavard, if we're going to change between the back three and the back four, Pavard is perfect for that system, so that's why I'd go with him, and then I'd also say Marcus Lorente, Marcus Lorente I feel like is somebody who, versatile, right mid, right back, centre mid, CDM, he's won La Liga, he's kind of one of those players who can just play multiple positions, and then the last player I take is Lavia, because now what you're doing, you're allowing Lavia to bed into the team with more quality options and experience. We've also accommodated another centre-back and a right-back in one in Pavard alone. You can kind of do, do that Joe Gomez role. Because I think Joe Gomez can go at right-back and do a decent job at times. I think Pavard is a better version of that. And I think he can be beneficial in our team. Okay, he hasn't got much pace. But I don't think that should be the one factor that negates or chooses whether or not you have him there or not. Um, you know, I think you can have fantastic fullbacks who are slow. Simple as that. You know, I, I don't think they need to be quick to be a great fullback. And I think Pavard can certainly add something to our team. So, listen, they're not players that we will sign. We won't go anywhere near Lorente or Pavard or anything like that. But I do think Amrabat, from a from a weekly wages point of view, would make sense. But it turns out, Dewsbury Hall and Andre are two players that we're looking at. And I'm not going to lie, guys. I just know very little about both. So, I can't say they're going to come in and be world beaters or not. But we need to, I suppose, have faith in Klopp if they're the players that he wants. 
And if that's what the, if, if that's all the club can get, that's interesting. Because I, I do try and be balanced. I try and be fair. I'm not trying to just crap on the club at all because I don't think that makes productive content. And again, it's not, you know, as much as I love the club and I want us to win, I understand that we are not that same mentality monsters as we once was, if that makes sense. I understand we're not what we was in the 80s and the 90s. Even, I'd argue, what we was under Edwards. I feel like Edwards wanted to leave for a reason and I think it was because of the lack of resources at the disposal. And, you know, he'd done so well with Liverpool and maybe he knew we were going into a period where there was going to be a huge underinvestment into the team and that's why I'm sitting here now thinking well that could be what, what led to his departure and a lot of people speculated that at the time um, Jürgen Klopp has been vocal about how many players that he thinks we need to sign not precisely how many players but he's been vocal that we need signings and that's something that's very rare from Jürgen Klopp. Now, I don't think it's productive for Klopp to come out and sit there and say, like, oh, yes, we need a right-back and we need a CDM and we need this because now you're directly calling out the people in those positions. But you can come out and say we need players and you can come out we say and say we need defenders and midfielders. And the agency amongst the squad should be, well, squad depth is important. And I hope Klopp at least knows this. If Klopp is going into the rooms with FSG and saying, no, we don't need squad depth, I don't want big squads... That's like professional suicide for me. I just don't understand it. But if he is going in there saying, I want these players, um, this, that and the other, and FSG are then responds and saying, yeah, listen, we're going to get them. There's just a few complications right now. Then great. You know, as long as we get the players that we need for the season ahead, I don't care. Um, I, I do believe Lavia will be one of the players, but that by itself will not be enough. A centre-back is required, a midfield is required. And I know that it's a broken record now. I know that I'm just repeating things that I've said to you in the past. Um, and I know that these are just two new midfielders that we've been randomly linked with out of nowhere. Uh, but at the same time, I do have that slight possibility we can still have a good season. But it all massively depends how we see out this transfer window. If we don't see it out well enough, if, we don't, if we're not efficient, if we're not effective, that's not... That's not going to be a good season for Liverpool. However, if we can be efficient, effective, get the deals, get the bargains, maybe even swoop in on a transfer, I don't know. Like, go out and get Amrabat and, and, and maybe try and swoop in, swoop in there before Man United proper go in for him. Because that's all I want to see. I just want to see good football, good players for good prices. And we've proven that we can do it before. But then you question the negotiation tactics of Shkomadka, who's primarily, you know, employee to be in that role and to get us players and bargains and um, so far it's just been very quiet from him. you know Dominic Sobosly great sign and McAllis the great sign but it's all good to, to get two fantastic wheels for the new car that you've got if you haven't got the other two wheels then you can't the fuck do you know what I mean so chat let me know what you think in the comments down below um, and, and, and try and be as objective as possible like understand the situation and but again do you know to those who are really angry right now I completely get it because if if somebody comes if an FSG supporter comes on the front line and simply says Liverpool cannot do more than what they're doing right now and they can provide me evidence to support that claim I'm fine to give FSG leeway if they literally cannot do anything I'll analyze the reason why they can't do anything what got them into the position where they can't do anything and if it was something that was completely out of their control fine but as we know there's no smoke without fire and if we're skint or if we're not looking to spend high amounts of money there's a reason for that and then there's someone to blame for that and that's why we've got to be looking in fsg's direction right now just because we don't know the reason why we're not spending doesn't mean we can't be fearful going into another season with a massively underdeveloped squad half of the players we've now got are young unproven players and a lot of the experienced players are now on the other side of that hill they might not be finished but they are on that way down they have hit the ceiling they're now bouncing off that's worrying that's worrying when you've got young players who yes can go into the next level because there's so many players i have faith in i have faith in curtis jones i have faith in ben Doak. i have faith in um trent alexander arnold eventually to just be that consistent player that we need uh, but we need that system around them i have faith can that can be a world-class center back I have faith that Diogo Jota can be one of the most lethal number nines in the league. I truly do believe these things. But there's other things you need to put together for these, uh, for these events to come into fruition. So, listen, chat, I'm not trying to be um, all FSG talk today or, oh, we might get this player. I'll be honest, I genuinely don't know. I've never known because I'm not a journalist. But what I am is a fan who just wants to see the team do well. And I know we have no chance of doing well if we go into the season underdeveloped. So that's why I'm saying let's go out there, let's get the quantity of players and just hope that they bring the quality as well. Uh, but yeah, man, let me know what you think in the comments down below. 
all of your views. Would you take Dewsbury Hall? Uh, would you take Andre? If we got those two, are you happy with those two players? Uh, plus Lavia, I suppose. And if, do you know what? I want to propose the question to you. So I said Pavard, Lorente and Lavia, because Lavia is still not complete. If you could sign three players, realistic names, ones that are kind of in the transfer realm for us right now, who would you go and get? And I'll accept answers like Kessie, who's linked with Saudi Arabia. Um, Taram, who, even though we've not been linked with recently, I'm happy to hear that name again. Kone, who's now back from injury. You know, those type of players, you know, someone who's within a realistic frame who, can, who Liverpool can get. Um, yeah, it's been a good video, guys, but there's a lot of things to be worried about, sceptical of. But hopefully we just get those exciting results like what we have under Jürgen Klopp before. But anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you all and your mothers in a bit. Smash your like as well, by the way.